This morning, we're spotlighting the upcoming homicide trial of Chad Daybell, the doomsday prophet, and the upcoming homicide trial for his wife, Lori Vallow Daybell, for her fourth husband, Charles Vallow. So currently, Lori is serving a life sentence for the murders of her two young children, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, and for Chad's first wife, Tammy Daybell. Now, we didn't get to watch that trial because camera access was restricted, but we did see cult mom at sentencing. The first time J.J. visited me after he passed away, he put his arm around me and he said to me, you didn't do anything wrong, mom. I love you, and I know you loved me every minute of my life. Now, Lori's husband, Chad Daybell, will now go before an Idaho jury very soon for the same crimes. Jury selection set to start the first week in April, and this time we'll get to see the trial playing out on camera. Then later this year, Lori will go on trial in Arizona for the murder of her fourth husband, Charles Vallow. You may recall, we had Lori's cousin, Megan, come on opening statements with me some time ago. Let's take a listen to some of what she shared with us about her cousin, Lori. I know they were trying to get her evaluated by mental health professionals. I think they eventually did. And she, quote unquote, passed with flying colors. So I think from that point, it was really hard for Charles's voice to, to get heard. There's no way that the day after Tammy's body was exhumed that he that he died. And we know now that um, he received a, a blessing from Chad Daybell. And to me, I listened to that and think that was Chad telling him that he, he was okay to leave this life. So I really think that either he took his life or that he was helped in some way. And this morning, we're talking with some other family members of Lori's. I want to welcome in her brother, Adam Cox, now onto the program. Adam, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. And, and I am sure this has not been at all easy for you. You've been through so much heartbreak. Uh, my, my heart goes out to you for the loss of uh, JJ and Tylee, um, your, your nephew and your niece. And um, tell us just first, please, how has this been for you? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Um, uh, it's it's been a uh, just a it's unbelievable what happened. Like it's something that you just never think would ever happen to your family, and then it happens. And you see people on TV talk about this all the time. I just never thought that would happen to my family, and I just ne never even came close to thinking anything like this would happen. So it's really hard to figure out how to process it. How it's been four years, and I'm still trying to process it and try to. Uh, heal from it, make sense of it, and um, so it's definitely a, a difficult life experience. I would imagine it's probably caused a lot of division in your family. Would you speak to that, please, Adam? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I've t we talk about this on our podcast all the time, Silver Lining Podcast, um, and the reason that my uncle Rex and I wrote a book about our family ties, it's, the book's called Lori's Lies and Family Ties, and the reason we wrote that, for me, my purpose was to uh, make other families aware that they need to communicate, they need to talk more, they can't just, you know, sweep things under the rug or assume things. So. Um, and I get into that in the book because our family was divided. Lori's lies really um, divided our whole family uh, for a while. Um, we're all trying to, you know, go trying to make good now and trying to reestablish the relationships that were just blown up. Um, so, with that being said, um, yeah, we're 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 a work in progress right now, trying to um, get our relationships back to sure. where they should be. Sure, Adam. I, I can't even imagine what you all are going through. This has to be so devastating because it's awful when something uh, so horrific happens to your family 
and yet here you have another family member accused in it. it it's just dreadful. And uh, you mentioned your podcast, which I intended to ask you about the Silver Linings podcast. You and your uncle have been very vocal uh, about how you uh, do not condone in any way, shape, or form uh, Lori's behavior. And, and of course, you've wanted justice you know, for your niece and nephew, for Tammy Daybell, for Charles Vallow, for all of uh, the people affected here. In one episode in particular, I know you focused on the transformation of how Lori, your sister, was a really good mom and then suddenly, you know, turned into a killer and the delusions became really dangerous. Do you remember the moment in time ever thinking to yourself, perhaps she is a dangerous person? Well, uh, that's also another loaded question, and I don't think Lori. I'm not trying to ask you anything changed. loaded, Adam. Let me be very clear. I, 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 I respect you. I feel for you as a person, as a journalist. This is awful what you've been through. So I, I'm just trying to just be very open here. So just so you know. Well, I didn't say that as a bad thing for you. Okay. I'm just in my mind, I'm trying to process things. Yeah, but I'm sure with Lori, right. you know. Um, Obviously, Lori was um, a, a different person, um, but this wasn't an overnight thing. We talk about this in one of my podcasts that, you know, it's not, it wasn't just one day she snapped. I think this was maybe two or three years of her going down a path. And then when she met Chad, it's like putting gas on the fire. Um, but as far as delusional goes, I remember uh, being at her house and we have family gatherings at her, her and Charles's house all the time. And, um, you know, she would, had been going down this, this path of, um, you know, talking about the end of the world and things like that. So when, when we were talking in the kitchen, she had mentioned that she's transitioning into a translated being, um, an immortal being. Like she didn't have to eat anymore. And if somebody shot her with a gun, the bullet wouldn't go, it wouldn't, you know, affect her. So when she was saying stuff like that, I just looked at her and I said, well, Lori, you know, I, I'm, you know, that's not true. And she said, you think I'm crazy, don't you? And I was like, I don't know if you're crazy or not. I just know that what you're telling me is not true. And that literally was the last conversation we had. She cut me out immediately after that and didn't talk to me. Uh, Adam, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's it's like a nightmare. It really is what uh, you've been living, your family members. Uh, I, again, our hearts go out to you. Uh, I want to play a clip for you, please, and really turn to the case uh, that your sister's going to have coming up soon in Arizona with her fourth husband, Charles Vallow. And in this clip, we see it's from the vantage of, of body camera uh, footage. Uh, the police officer's talking with him. He's really concerned about your niece and your nephew. Lost her mind. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to say it. We're LDS. She thinks she's a resurrected being and a and a a god. You're not Charles. I don't know who you are, what you did with Charles, but I can murder you now with my powers. Mm. And you see him there, and you think how he was really. I've always said, Adam, that to me, Charles Vallow was like the last advocate for the kids. Like he was really the one trying to raise the red flag and say like, my wife has become somebody I don't recognize and, and she's gonna be doing something dangerous. Um, did you see that as well? Did you see that he was really trying to protect JJ and Ty Lee? Well, I did, I did know that he wanted to get Lori help. That was one of the main reasons he reached out to me. And at the time, uh, Lori had, you know, told all of my, our family, don't talk to Charles. He had an affair and he's bad and all this stuff. And so, you know, my family, you know, didn't talk to Charles. Charles had nobody but me. Like, I'm, my phone is always open to anybody. I would love, I love to talk to everybody, get information so I can make a, a, a my own decision. And when Charles was telling me the things that Lori was saying, I was like, yes, I've heard some of those things and I believe everything you're saying. So um, with that being said, when Charles would, would tell me about, you know, things that Lori said, you know, in my mind, I didn't think Lori would ever do anything like hurt anybody i know that she was you know in a delusion maybe or talking a big game but i never in my in my mind ever thought that she would do what she did um and so that that one really that surprised me and um it's it just it's heartbreaking because um you know charles is trying we're trying to tell everybody look something's wrong with Lori, and you know it's no one's no one's wanting to help us it's like we're knocking on everybody's door including you know 
you know, police and including, um, you know, psych about people that, you know, let Lori go. Like, it's, it's just really difficult when you're trying to get somebody help and, and it seems like nobody's helping. You talked about a nightmare. It's, that's what it's like. It's like not going on neighbor's doors and knocking and nobody answering. That's what right. it felt like to me. I'm sure. I'm sure. And it almost, I'm sure it feels like a nightmare that's never going to end. We know Chad's trial is coming up, Lori's other trial. Uh, you have a lot ahead, a lot of healing uh, to do. Uh, and we applaud you, Adam, for the advocacy that you are doing now. The book you've written, Lori's Lies and Family Ties, and the podcast that's really dedicated to your niece and nephew called Ty Lee and JJ's Silver Linings podcast. Uh, and we know that uh, they will certainly never be forgotten. Uh, Adam, we want to continue the conversation conversation with you. We're out of time for today, uh, but please come back on the show and we'd love to hear more from you soon. Take good care. Sure.